the Hatha Yoga Pradipika says, behind every sick person there is a spiritual being. Behind every diabetic there is a yogi. Behind every person suffering from depression is an aspirant. When someone comes for help, teach them yoga and let them be better. Yoga treats illness and injuries, but it does not stop there. It goes even further into the spiritual domain of life. Join me for these 12 yoga poses you should do every day. In April in our membership community, we will be supporting our members in their primary aspiration of committing to their daily yoga practice by formulating daily yoga timetables and extra support like a daily yoga chart and a live class with two-way video teaching our members how to use the daily yoga chart. I will also be releasing five new classes into our membership in April, including a 30-minute daily hatha yoga, daily hatha yoga for grounding, a short daily hatha yoga for strength, a short daily hatha yoga for optimal digestion, and a 20-minute daily hatha yoga for breast tissue health. We would love to welcome you into our community and support you in your daily yoga practice in April and beyond. To join us, go to melissawest.com slash membership. Hi, I'm Melissa from Yoga with Melissa. If you are new, welcome. I teach yin, restorative, hatha, yoga nidra, yin yang yoga, and we are back outside filming and it's a windy day here today, so you might hear some wind blowing across my mic. So sorry about that in advance, but it's just so nice to be outside again. And I know the people that click on videos like this are just incredible, self-illumined people and these poses are going to help to illuminate you from the inside out. So you are going to radiate even more goodness into the world today. So that is going to be wonderful. I know uh, that for me, uh, a big part of being unhurried in my own self-care is subscribing to wonderful YouTube channels. There's so many great YouTube channels out there. And I've been putting out weekly yoga videos like this, one hour yoga videos, and just taking that time every day for my yoga practice. Usually spend about an hour on the mat. is a big part of recognizing my own self-worth and my own value. And so if that's something that's going to be useful for you then we'd love to have you as a subscriber on our channel so go ahead and press subscribe and press that little bell and you can count on me to be giving you an hour class every week as I have been since 2009 so let's begin with our 12 yoga poses that you should do every single day this is one that is definitely on my everyday list uh, and it's legs up the wall. So you're going to need a wall for this. I'm going to show you an alternative. If you don't have a wall, you just need a block. You're going to scooch your hips right up against the wall. And then you're going to swing your legs around so that they end up up the wall. If you have back issues, it's a good idea to do legs up a chair instead. And if you don't have a wall, you can take a block and or you could use a chair you could do legs at the chair that would be nice or you can use a block like me if you're outside or something and you don't have either of those things and you can just let your legs float in the air like that if you're doing this like me uh, you could just want to make sure that your legs stay super as much relaxed through the quads so there's no gripping here So this pose is incredibly beneficial for tired legs and feet, for varicose veins. It's fantastic for your circulation because it takes all the blood that's moved to the extremities and it brings it back to the heart for fresh blood exchange. It's fantastic for your lymphatic system. So that's great because your, your lymph system doesn't have its own pump and it flows upwards against gravity so you're you're helping your lymphatic system your lymphatic system is connected with your overall immune system it's uh, it helps to move toxins out of your body 
So this is really great for your lymphatic system, for your overall immunity. This is just a generally overall calming and relaxing pose. Very calming and soothing for the mind. Great to relieve mild depression and anxiety. So many benefits to this pose. You can take it for 10, 20 minutes at a time. No problem. Great pose to take as a break any point in the day. Okay, so from here you're going to bend your knees, roll to your side if you've got your legs up the wall, and then come on down. And we're going to do one of my absolute favorite poses for building strength in your low body. I love this pose because it's, it's just so great. It just, it's just not injurious at all. You can put the block between your legs and just hold on to that. It's great for alignment from your hips, knees, through your feet. You're going to press into your feet and lift your pelvis up off the ground. And you can feel how this opens up the fronts of your hips. So it's a great counter pose to sitting and tight hips from running and walking, any kind of sports. And then it strengthens the glutes and the muscles of the legs as well but it's not as hard on the body as poses like squats. So squats are like chair pose or lunge or warriors or goddess victory squats that might be harder on the knees. This one is just fantastic. It also opens the chest and the lungs. It's great for menstrual uh, issues and menopause, perimenopause. So just an all-round great pose, again, very calming for the mind. And you're going to slowly lower down. You can release the blocks. And we'll do a quick counter pose. This just draw your knees into your chest, hold on behind your knees, just to lengthen out through your low back after that and to just give those glutes a little stretch. Let your shoulders relax, feel the support of the earth underneath you. Okay, the next pose that is just so great, that is a must every day, is Apanasan pose, knee to chest pose. If you have low back issues, you're going to keep your left leg bent and draw your right knee in. Otherwise, you can get some nice lengthening through your descending colon by lengthening your left leg out. So choose whichever version is best for you. This pose puts weight on your ascending colon. So it's fantastic for digestion, for eliminating waste for your body. So one of the great things about yoga is that you are purifying your system. So if you can eliminate 
waist you're this is how you have that glow from the inside out <laughs> with yoga because you have less toxins in your body so by uh, just making sure that you're eliminating waste uh, optimally this is uh, how you have that inner radiance that self-illumination by taking care of the physical body by making sure the large intestine the colon is eliminating waste optimally in your body Okay, we're going to release this side and let's just pause here for a moment, let the body settle and even just feel in here to the difference between your low back on your right side and the low back on the left side and you'll feel into another benefit of this pose which is that it relieves low back tension, helps with low back pain. So let's go ahead and draw the left leg in. <coughs> this is the one of the best poses for constipation. And often if you uh, have low back pain, one of the major culprits for that is constipation. So we can relieve the constipation, we can relieve the low back pain as well. And then release that leg and just again pause here feel the difference uh, if this pose is also great for relieving bloating in the belly so just feel the difference in your belly the way it feels your low back and then we're going to move on to one of my favorite poses for your hips so to release your hips you're going to cross your left ankle over your right thigh and then you're going to open your right knee out to the side, draw your left leg in, hold on behind your leg. So this is called, um, I call it keyhole, sometimes called eye of the needle, sometimes called sleeping pigeon. I like it much better than pigeon pose because it's so much easier on the knees. So this is why it's one of the, to me, one of the 12 poses you should do every day to open up your hips. You can feel it in your glutes and the outside of your thighs. So hips get tight from doing things, from going up and down stairs, from running, from walking, but they also get tight from being sedentary. So it's important that we attend to them every day.
and then you're going to release your left leg down and while we're here before we come to the other side let's go back to that bridge pose with this leg variation so that you have to work your left leg a little harder if it's too much go back to both legs on the ground but press into your left leg and lift up also feel how your core is working harder now too Okay, and then we're going to lower down and we're going to do the keyhole stretch, eye of needle, sleeping pigeon on the other side, cross your left leg ankle over the top of the right thigh, open your knee out and then draw your right leg in just until you feel sensation on the outside of your left leg and into your left glutes. Hold on behind your knee, draw your leg in, use your elbow to open your knee out to the side. Okay, and then you're going to lower your right leg down. Again, we're going to do the one-legged bridge with the keyhole variation legs. And if it's too much, you can use both feet on the ground again. Press into your right foot and lift your leg, your glutes off the ground. And again, feel how this engages your core more as well. And then you're going to slowly lower down, hug your knees into your chest. And then I'm going to give you two options. You can roll to your side to come up onto all fours or you can rock. Rocking is really great because it moves your inner ear, which helps your balance. So if balance is something that you're working with, it's a great idea to add some rocking into your routine or rocking and rolling. We're going to roll um, because it'll, it get, gets that inner ear moving, which uh, in, helps with your balance. So. Uh, we can do some of this and you can come back and forth a few times around your spine is a nice massage for your spine too so there's a bonus now you've got 12 and a half poses <laughs> so just stuff like that really helps your inner ear change your inner ear just like when you're a kid and really helps with balance <clears throat> so the next pose probably comes as no surprise to you <laughs> if you're on uh, a floor a hardwood floor make sure you put some padding underneath your knees like a folded blanket or double up your mat we're going to do we're going to do cat cow pose this one massages your spine increases spinal flexibility you can also do it sitting in a chair we're going to exhale round up through your back and then inhale and arch through your back so it increases spinal flexibility it opens up your low back and your abdominals it helps to aid in your digestion so digestion is not just about good elimination which we did uh, before with the apanasana pose but we also need to be able to assimilate the nutrients that we get in our food so if we're eating really really good food for us which i know all of you are so healthy and you eat really good food but you're not able to assimilate the nutrients then it's actually not that helpful so it's good that we do poses like this that help our digestion it increases circulation it stimulates because we're moving here from our chest too it stimulates your thyroid and your parathyroid function your wrists are getting some nice stimulation here as well so it's great for mild carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis. 
it's good for sciatica here this arching here in your back really helps with uh, sciatica and low back in injuries this movement helps to energize your mind it relieves mild depression and anxiety and it helps to reduce stress so an all-round fantastic pose because it just stimulates the spine which houses the central nervous system Definitely a pose you should do every day. And there's a gazillion variations on it. You can shift your weight back and forward as you do this pose. That's a nice variation. Then you get some, the nice, um, benefit of doing this variation is you get a lot of movement through your joints so wrist joints shoulder joints knee joints and hip joints so then it becomes a really beneficial movement for arthritis okay my next Favorite pose that you should do every day is, these probably aren't gonna be any surprise for you. Maybe we should have like, it's too bad we're not doing this live. We could do like, guess which pose Melissa is going to do next. <laughs> we're gonna do lunge pose. So you'll walk your left leg through. So this helps to open up your hips and your shoulders, especially the version I'm gonna do today. You're gonna sink down through your front left foot and we're gonna open up your chest. It also stimulates digestion. So differently than the Apanasana pose does because it lengthens out your large intestine. So we want to, when we're talking about digestion, we want to, we want to press on that large, in, uh, large intestine, but we also want to uh, lengthen it and relax it so that you can let go, right? If you're just always pushing on it and compressing it, it doesn't help you to let go. And this is also really great for relieving sciatica. Okay, we're going to switch sides. So sink down through your right foot, come upright, open up through the front left hip, and then let's open up through your chest again. Okay, release that pose. We're gonna come into downward facing dog. This is not one of my official poses, but I'll sneak it in there. It's definitely a good pose. It's an inversion. You're inverted, you're against gravity. You're building upper body strength. You're stretching out your breast tissue, which by the way, ladies, we've got a fantastic class coming up for you in our membership community to look after your breast tissue every single day. Okay, look forward at your hands and walk your feet in. Okay, here's another one of my favorite poses for every single day that I think you should do every day. Uh, this is Breath of Joy. It's fantastic for your mood and improves circulation. It's so energizing. It's so uplifting, it enhances your mood, it gives you energy. I think I've covered it off. If you have high or low blood pressure, if you get dizzy easily, then you're gonna do this pose 
standing up and it becomes like more of a pranayama practice. So you inhale, bring your arms out to the front, and you inhale, you bring them out to the side, you inhale, you bring them overhead. Again, like so great for your breast tissue. And fantastic ladies and then you exhale and you fold forward so skip that part if you uh, get dizzy okay so here we go we're gonna inhale 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 exhale You're going to come up to standing and just stand still. Feel your energy. That pose is just so fantastic for energizing. It's fantastic for your lymphatic system because it's just, it pumps. There's so many lymph nodes right in your armpit, right? So it pumps that lymphatic system for you. Love it. Okay, so let's take your legs wide. And this is another pose that I just love. And, um, oh, the, the, the other thing I wanted to say about um, Breath of Joy is that you just got 20 squats in too. So I love it because it's also a lower body strengthening pose. And sometimes you'll do Breath of Joy in a class and you'll think, wow, my legs really hurt the next day and you don't really know why. It's because you've been having so much fun doing Breath of Joy and you didn't really even recognize that you're doing <laughs> uh, so much lower body strengthening in that pose. Okay, so this one uh, is another pose I love. We're going to do side angle pose. It's another one I think you can do every day. I think you need to do a side bend every day. That's why I included this. So you're going to turn your right toes out, sink down through your right sit bone, bring your right elbow to your right quad, circle your left arm up and around. So I love this because it puts your body into a side bend. It creates so much space through your torso, opens up your chest and your shoulders. Again, ladies, so great for the breast tissue lymphatic system great for all the organs creates so much space for the digestive organs all the abdominal organs love this pose also if you have any back issues it creates so much space along the spine lengthens your ql which is so great for back pain love it So make sure, like me, you're not rolling in. Open your chest and your shoulders. Get that side bend. Okay, let's come up and do the other side. So you're going to turn your right toes in, your left toes out. Sink down to your uh, left sit bone left elbow to the left quad open up that left shoulder circle the right shoulder the left <laughs> oh my god mirror melissa mirror circle the right shoulder around and there you go open it up and then uh, roll your knee out. The other thing you're probably noticing too is it's a great lower body strengthening pose to legs, glutes.
Okay, good. <clears throat> and then uh, the another pose out of the 12 poses I think you should do every day I included was warrior three pose I included this because I think it's a great full body core strengthening pose plus the bonuses that you also get a balance <laughs> balance with it at the same time so stand on your left foot and then you'll just tip forward you can hold on to the wall if you want draw up through your abdominals And then come back up to standing. Let's just shake that out. And then we'll go to the other side. Stand on your right leg. Nice and tall, you just hinge over your hip and you wanna bring the whole thing parallel to the ground. Okay, good job. All right, so we're going to come down to uh, do some cobra pose. Bet you I can sneak another down dog in there. <laughs> so let's, let's uh, stand at the top of your mat, take a deep breath in. Exhale, hinge forward, step back into downward facing dog. Oh, I bet you I can sneak a plank in there too. Plank. Probably even sneak a chaturanga in there. Chaturanga, lower down. Okay. Hands underneath the shoulders, roll the shoulders back and up. And you're going to lift your chest up off the ground. This pose is fantastic. It's a great back bend. I think you should do a back bend every single day. This opens your chest, your shoulders, your throat, lengthens your spine, it increases spinal flexibility, strengthens the low back, the shoulders and the legs. It reduces fatigue, it energizes the mind. It's great if you have sciatica, low back pain. It reduces mild depression and anxiety, reduces stress, stimulates the circulatory system, the digestive system and the lymphatic systems as well. It's also great to lengthen out your psoas. Your psoas actually has to be long to do this pose. Okay, we're coming down to my last two poses you should do every day. Okay, so you're gonna come up to seated. I think you should do a twist every day. So we're gonna do Matsi and Drasana, take your legs out long in front of you. Bring your right leg in, cross it over. You can either leave your left leg long, especially if your hips are tight, or you can bring it in as long as you can keep your foot and your hip on the ground. You can wrap your left arm around your right leg and turn towards it. Or if you have a curvy body, then you're gonna do an open twist. Okay, whatever works best for you, doesn't, doesn't really matter. You want me to do an open twist? <laughs> okay. So twists are great for back pain because it gets at all the little tiny muscles that run along the spine. They're great for digestion because it tones the uh, digestive organs, all the abdominal organs. 
It's great for all the organs. Okay, and then we'll take your legs out in front of you. You're going to shake your legs out. Just give a little lift in the middle. Cross your left leg over your right leg. And you can stay here and twist, or you can bend your right leg in. And you can either twist towards your bent leg, or if you have a more curvy body, you can open, do the open twist. Okay, I also want to point out, I'm coming to the most important pose, number 12, Shavasana, but before we do that, I want to point out what I omitted. I didn't put in a seated forward fold because we spend so much time <laughs> sitting. So I don't think we need that in a yoga class necessarily. There are benefits to it, but um, as far as poses you should do every day, I think they're very advanced practices and I chose not to put it in this class. The, that's a whole other discussion, another time, another day. <laughs> but uh, let's do Shavasana. This is the most important pose that you should do every day. If you roll your mat and you were only to do one pose in a day, this is it. My favorite pose. We, Our community, my uh, closest students in my community, we have so many jokes about this pose, so many memes. We always say, today I did Shavasana after Shavasana. <laughs> so, Shavasana, the most important pose. <coughs> so when you lie down on the ground and turn your palms up beside you or for more grounding, you can place them on your belly. I'm such an expert at Shavasana. You'll see that it's a, a great pose to relieve tension from your body. So you can just let all the tension release from your body. You can receive the, the energy from the earth and then the tension from your body can let go. Each time you exhale, you can release more and more tension. You can feel how it's easier to breathe when you lie down like this and how your breath slows down. And when we lie down like this too, we take, it's, we take the infant posture so all our adulting goes away.
to continue to rest back here in Shavasana, I'm going to sit up and read you a poem. The one other thing I wanted to say about Shavasana before I read you a poem is that it's such a great pose to just recharge your batteries. And then I guess poetry is the way for me to add almost a whole extra dimension to a yoga practice because I really think that poetry is a spiritual practice as well. Poetry is the language of devotion and prayer, chant and song. And reading and listening to poetry creates clarity. It deepens and expands our spiritual inquiry. It cultivates wisdom, compassion, clarity, patience and love. And so I think poetry really has the potential to attune us to our own self-illumination. So I'm going to read a poem that I chose for you called Skylights by Tess Gallagher. If it resonates with you and it illuminates you from the inside, then wonderful. And if not, not to worry, you can just let it go. You don't have to love everything that I love. <laughs> you can be like my daughter says. My daughter says, you do you, mom. <laughs> Skylights by Tess Gallagher. In the night, I get up and walk between the slices of deep blue sky. After a time, I lie down on the floor and stare up like a child on a roof. Stars tug at my face. The rooms commune like hillsides. I think of antelope, of talons of owls, of a tiger that has not eaten for days. Come to bed, Ma calls to me. What are you doing? The moon has floated into my bed. In a cool white light, I rise and go downstairs to the kitchen table. A little starlight clings to the tablecloth, to clock face, the rim of a water glass. Is anything the matter, she calls. It is then the wild sound comes to my throat, and for a moment, my house hurtles through space like the word hungry, uttered by an army of tigers advancing on a column of children. So gradually allow your breath to deepen and you can start to wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees and roll to your right side. And you can slowly make your way up to seated. I'm gonna finish our class by uh, gathering the fruits of our practice into ourselves first and then offering them out into the world. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So give yourself a thumbs up for doing these 12 yoga poses that I think are great to do every single day. And put, I did, I practiced my 12 yoga poses today in the comments. And then feel free to share these with other people that you know that love to practice yoga. And let's see, uh, what you think, uh, what they think of them. Actually, let me know in the comments if, you, if I left out any that you think you should be doing every day too. And I want to thank Gabriella, Ivy, Leah, Paige, Jane, Carla, Lorraine, Jennifer, Maura, 
Cornelia, Donna, and Sean, thank you all so much for your donations. They really super help us in being able to support ourselves here just in like basic stuff like paying our rent putting food on our tables so that we can continue to be able to live as human beings in this world <laughs> because it takes tim and i full time to be able to be able to do this i know you guys only see this one video that comes out every week but there's it's a lot of work to do this believe it or not <laughs> and it takes two people and uh, full time and uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes so thank you so much in supporting this and in allowing us to touch lives around the world we really appreciate that your donations and just you being here and showing up and practicing and changing the world one person at a time by doing your practice because that is really what makes the difference it adds compassion and wisdom and clarity and illumination through the whole world one yoga practice at a time so i appreciate you i appreciate that so much I'm sending you much love through from Brit beautiful british columbia may your joy be as deep as our pacific ocean it may you be as rooted as the old growth trees in our forest and may you be as strong as our mountains om shanti namaste